I am a career coach and executive coach. My company's Hollywood Coaching. Um, I'm also a filmmaker and musician and songwriter. And I've also got this gig as an executive coach. And so I've, I'm balancing the creative side of myself and the business side of myself. And every once in a while, I think, I, like I looked at my notes from my, from my talk tonight and I thought, why is leadership sometimes so boring? And as an artist and a filmmaker, it's not really where I spend my life and my time. I'm not really a corporate person, and yet I'm consulting to corporations and working with people in business. I was forgetting temporarily why it excites me and why it, I'm passionate about leadership. And I think it's because I've worked with so many companies as a filmmaker, as a musician, that were so dysfunctional. And it made me really question, what was I doing in this business? What was I doing in this profession? And I think it's part of the challenge is that people in creative industries and all kinds of industries, if we're doing something that we really care about, something we're really passionate about, we get to a certain level where we've started a company, we've started something, we're getting successful, suddenly we're ma managing a lot of people. And suddenly we're at, at a level of a skill set that we have never had to experience before. So very few people who are really passionate about their business or their creativity or their entrepreneurial gig really studied leadership and management, but suddenly they find themselves in charge of people. So I wanted to talk about the way leadership is changing and particularly one of the reasons I think leadership is so boring is because nobody really knows what, what to say about it. So I'm going to talk about the sentence of, from Marshall briefly and then talk about my own definitions. So Marshall sort of signifies this, the leader of the past was someone who knew how to tell and the leader of the future will be someone who knows how to ask. So this, this reflects a shift and a transition from what I call the military mode of leadership, where it's essentially the boss tells something to the next level of people, who tells the next level of people, who tells the next level of people. There's no collaboration. There's, it's just a military hierarchical model. It, it works well in some situations, like the military. Um, it doesn't work well in collaborative business, and especially in sort of how business is being work, work today. So what Marshall's pointing to here, the leader of the future is the person who knows how to ask. That kind of underneath that is that it's the person who can help lead by questions, lead by asking powerful questions, and get people contributing and get people thinking, as we were talking before. So, so Marshall's got part of it, but where I, I'm taking it a step further, so I realized I had to come up with my own definition of leadership. I came up with 10 sentences, not quite 10 commandments, but 10 sentences that really talk about this. So leadership sentence number one, leadership is the art of facilitating collaborative creation towards a powerful goal. The key word here is the facilitating part. It's not just about telling people what to do, it's about getting the best out of people and it's a whole different process. So it's, it's facilitating creative collaboration, but it's not just command and control. Sentence number two, leadership growth involves an ongoing process of developing the skills and awareness for inspiring, nurturing, and managing collaborative work in progress. So again, leadership is towards a mindset in, in the leader, Start becoming aware of our need to develop people, to develop ourselves, to develop our team, and again, it's not just having a plan and telling people what to do. It is, is a process of finding out what needs to be happening, finding out what your, what your team is best at, seeing the needs change and shift as we're in progress on it. So what we've extrapolated out of these sentences is that there are three leadership actions. So the leader is responsible first for articulating a vision of change. So the leader has to get clear on what they want to create, whether it's business, creativity, politics, family, whatever it is you're creating, the leader has to spend some time thinking and then articulating what it is that he or she wants to create. Then leaders have to encourage and solicit a variety of voices and opinions. We have to get our whole team, our whole family, our whole company involved in a discussion. It's again, and not just command and control, we're looking to get a full brand, a full, full band spectrum of ideas. But also the key differences here is leaders have to be willing to be transformed in the process. So the leader will be, it's not about saying, I've learned everything I need to know, now I'm gonna do my thing and tell you what to do. It's a good leader will step into the fire in a sense and be willing to be changed in the course of hearing people's feedback, in the course of hearing people's questions, concerns, 
support, the leader will change, the team will change, the project will likely change over time. So the leader has to, the, the modern leader has to be able to have a vision, have it get really messy, and then still step into that and say, okay, I think I see what we've got here, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. The other challenge is not to be paralyzed by hearing too many voices. We're still in charge, we've still been either elected or selected or hiring people, pay paying people, so we're still the boss, but we still need to get opinions and then be able to move forward. I guess the other thing I was gonna talk about actually was how can you be a leader at any level? Um, and the answer is questions. At any level of an organization or of a group, anybody can be asking questions. And it's a, it's a skill we talk about in coaching called powerful questions and open-ended questions. So what we want to ask are questions that will help thinking, expand thinking. Um, so it would tend to be a question like, well, what are we really getting at here? What are we really after here? What's going what's to look like when we create this thing? Or what might be the obstacles? Or what might be the... What might be the things that are needed? So I don't, you don't have to be the boss to be doing that. And I think if you, at any level of the organization or a group, have a sense of, of what you want to see created, you can be asking questions that, that help people see it that way, that help people understand what's going to be required of that. And so you don't have to just be keeping quiet. And it's, it, it, it assists a good leader who's open to new ideas and new suggestions. Thank <laughs> you.